Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, the best knife sharpener ever. Today, I'll be doing a long-term test review of this, the Amerabrade knife sharpener system. I've had some favorable things to say about this tool a couple times in some previous videos, but I really didn't want to do a full-on review of it until I'd had a chance to use it for a long time in a lot of different contexts. Well, I've used it for nearly a year now, and it's high time to give you the full report. So before I talk about the pluses and minuses, let me talk about exactly what it is and who it's for. The attachment is made for the Amerabrade 2x72 inch belt grinder, but they also make them to fit other brands of grinders. In simple terms, you clamp a knife into this little clamp, you lean it against a tool rest, and then you grind away to a sharp edge at a fixed angle. You can buy the full set from Amerabrade for around 250 bucks. So, who's it for? Well, basically anybody who sharpens a fair number of knives and owns a belt grinder. Does it work? Stick around and find out. But before I get cranked up, want to get my free PDF with tons of tips about how to get started as a knife maker? Link in the cards and description. Okay, so let's start by showing exactly how it operates. First, the clamping system. The clamp has a beveled tip so you won't mess up the clamp if you grind a steep angle into your edge. Then a rod with this little guide and handle. Now you can move this guide up and down with a set screw. The tool rest is mounted on a two inch square arm compatible with all of Ameribrade's grinders, but they also make a one and a half inch arm that's compatible with various other grinders. The arm has an adjustable tool rest that can be reversed, rotated, moved in and out, and articulated in various ways. The tool rest then supports the clamp rod so that you can kind of scrub the blade back and forth on your belt, flipping it over to grind both sides. So how does it actually work? I'm going to go through this in some detail because it's useful to see how well thought out it is. First point, I'm going to run the belt in reverse while I'm sharpening my knives with it. Why? Well, if you run edge up into a downward moving belt, at least on some types of belts, there's a fair chance of it digging in, catching the edge, flinging the knife. Extremely dangerous. Now the Ameribrade grinder has a little adjustment near the motor mount intended for sort of adjusting the tracking so that it will run backwards comfortably. But you can actually, at least on my machine, run the regular old tracking knob way over and you'll be able to track just fine in reverse. I won't promise everybody's machine does this, but mine does. So I don't monkey with anything else. I just flip it into reverse and crank the tracking over. Now, let's focus on clamping the blade. A key point to understanding clamps like this is that if the clamp isn't symmetrical, in other words, if it puts the knife over the center line of the little jig, you end up grinding the cutting edge of your knife asymmetrically because the two sides are at slightly different angles. So the fix that they came up with at Ameribrade is to have small movable shims, which allow you to change the center point of the clamp to accommodate different thicknesses of knives. If you do the same thickness of knife all the time, say one eighth of an inch or whatever, you'll never even touch this. But if you do have to change it, adjustment is actually less of a pain in the neck than it looks like. As you can see, it only takes an Allen wrench and a few seconds work. So once it's centered, you just pop your knife into the jaw of the clamp and tighten it with this thumb screw. Good to go. Hey guys, just a pause to let you know that if you've been watching me with my tips and reviews over the years and want to give back to the channel, there's a way. It's called Patreon. There's a link in the cards and description that will not only show you how you can help out the channel, but get free plans for most of my knife builds, as well as allowing you to receive some bonus videos depending on your level of generosity. The more you help me, the more I can bring to the table with more and better videos. All right, speaking of which, let's get back to it. 
The next thing you'll need to adjust is this tool rest. The further out it goes, the steeper your angle. You can eyeball it to set your angle, or you can be precise and repeatable by using a little 20 buck magnetic angle finder from Home Depot. I just pop it against the platen, zero it, then set it on the clamp, and whatever the readout says, that's what my sharpening angle is. So all you have to do is diddle around with the tool rest until you have that angle that you want, and then you can do a million knives in a row without touching it again. I tend to like it at 21, 22, 23 degrees for most of the kind of knives that I use, but that angle should vary depending on the thickness of your knife edge, as well as the type of knife, the intended use, blah, blah, blah. End of the day, it's personal preference. There's no one way to do it. Once you've got it all set up, the whole thing's pretty stupid simple. Just run that blade gently back and forth, not too hard so as to avoid overheating the steel, and flipping it over periodically until you start raising a wire edge. If you look carefully, you can see that I've got one here and I'm just moving it with my finger. Normally, I do three or four light passes before flipping, running at a fairly low belt speed, again, to avoid overheating. Like I said, wire edge forms, done. You switch to a higher grit abrasive. Rinse and repeat. And that's really all there is to it. You can do this with a kitchen knife that's already been sharpened and get it sharper than 97% of humanity keeps their knives by just going to, say, 400 grit aluminum oxide belts and quitting right there. But quitting there would be no fun. Let's drill down a little more and see what it takes to get crazy levels of sharpness. So the first issue to deal with is what kind of knife I'm sharpening. If it's a new knife that I've just made and I'm sharpening for the first time, I start with a 120 grit ceramic belt. Then I just take it until a wire edge develops and jump up to higher grits. Now at this point, you really have just a gazillion choices. You can jump to a higher grit aluminum oxide belt. You can try structured abrasives. You can try micron belts. They all have advantages and disadvantages, but here's where I've landed. Like I said, I'll run that 120 on a new knife or 220 aluminum oxide on a knife with a pre-existing edge. Then I'll go to a 3M micron belt, ideally 30 micron. Now this is quite a big jump. If you want, you can go to 220, 400, maybe even 600, and then micron belts. But if you just take a little more time with the micron belt, you can get a nice clean edge. You just have to take your time with it. In my case, I'd rather spend a little more time on the Micron belt and not have to change belts three or four times, but that's a personal choice. Then, finally, the secret sauce, a leather stropping belt. I used to strop things on a little mechanical wheel that I developed, but my guys at Pops Knife Supply turned me on to these suckers, and to me, they're game changers. You just load the belt with some green polishing compound, then strop the edge. I'll use moderate pressure for a good little bit, 20, 30 seconds at least on one side and then flip it over and repeat. Then I'll go back and forth from side to side, shorter and shorter times, less and less pressure until I'm done with a few final single swipes on each side. At that point, it shines like a mirror and it'll shave hair like nobody's business. Pro tip, I always like to pull the tool rest out just a tiny bit before stropping, maybe an eighth of an inch. The strop is soft and will end up kind of wrapping around the edge if the angles are perfectly identical to the, all the rest of the regular belts. By pulling it out just this tiny little bit, it seems to focus more abrasive pressure on the cutting surface and give just that much better an edge. So, nerding out on some details. Okay, let me come back to the issue of running the belt in reverse. Can you run this system on a machine that only runs forward? In other words, can you run the belt down into the edge rather than grinding away from the edge? Ameribraid says no. For safety reasons, this should be only used with grinders that can run in reverse. 
Yeah, well, here's my take on that. There are certain belts that you wouldn't want to run forward using this attachment. Micron belts, for instance. And for sure, you would be crazy to run a leather stropping belt with the belt running forward towards the blade. That would be asking for a disaster. But I think if you're careful, you could run ceramic belts, structured abrasives, and other belts where there's little danger of the edge digging into the belt that could work just fine. Why do I think that? Uh, because I've done it. A lot. Before I started using a stropping belt, I always ran it forward and never had a problem. But to get the full use out of this system, especially that stropping capability, yeah, you want to go in reverse because, like I said, I want to make this super clear, you damn sure don't want to run a leather strop into the edge. So how time efficient is this process? There are some people who just love sitting around sharpening knives. I'm not one of them. And moreover, because this is my job, I'm always trying to make all my processes more efficient. Look, if you're just going to sharpen one pocket knife, it's just a moderate pain setting this thing up. You've got to set the tracking for reverse, you got to gauge your angle, change belts, fiddle with the tool rest arm. Could take you, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for one knife, which is not a massive improvement over doing it by hand on an Arkansas stone. The first advantage, though, is that no particular skill is involved versus, say, doing it on a stone. Plus, when you're done, it really is crazy sharp each and every time if you just follow through the whole process carefully. So, I do actually sharpen kitchen knives and pocket knives here on a onesie twosie basis sometimes. So, even with the time consuming aspects of the setup, the results make it worth the effort. But where this system really shines is when you're sharpening multiple knives at a time. As a guy who makes semi-production knives, I hate, hate, hate sharpening. You get to the end of making a batch of knives, it feels like you're finally home free, and then you gotta fuss around, fuss around, fuss around with all this sharpening. All the systems in the past that I used relied to some degree on my own skill which always left the door open to my being impatient or distracted or having to redo things or worse, not getting a result that was up to my standards. It seems trivial, but it was always kind of a stressful point in the making of the knife. The great thing about this system is that you can throw a belt on there and then run one knife after another through that particular grit, then put a new belt on and just assembly line a whole batch of knives again and once you've gotten through all that, you strop the whole batch at one throw. When you're done, everything's finished to the same high standard and really with a lot less stress. So you can clamp and unclamp the knives really pretty quickly, so switching from knife to knife doesn't take that long. I'm getting a better result than I did in the past in about half the time. Total win. Speaking of the clamp, you might look at this and think that this little clamp will scratch up your knives. In my experience, it doesn't, if you're careful. But if you sort of yank stuff in and out of that clamp, yeah, it's going to leave tiny little scratch marks. I regularly blow out the business end of the clamp with compressed air to make sure abrasives or crud aren't trapped in the jaw of the clamp, or, you know, sometimes just kind of clean it out with a paper towel or something like that. Now, what if I'm doing a suicide knife? That's my term for a knife that once you get down to the end, you put so much time into it that if anything goes wrong, you feel like committing suicide. You know, if I'm sharpening that kind of blade, a Damascus blade that I've etched and polished and done all this stuff, and I've got dozens and dozens of hours in it and all that, I'll just throw a little bit of auto body type masking tape on the spine of the blade, tighten it nice and tight, and there's just zero chance of marring the blade. But for my production stuff, I don't do that, and I rarely ever have any problems with it. Bottom line, for me, this is the best sharpening system, hands down, that I've ever used. Now, in fairness, pretty big caveat, that's just for me. I'm a professional knife maker, I do a fair amount of batch type work, and I have an Ameribrade grinder. So, in, for me, it's faster than most other methods that I've used, it's pretty easy to use, and it gets knives nasty, nasty sharp. Believe me, I've tried just about everything you can think of at some point. TS Prof, Lansky, Easy Lap, Diamond Stones, Kosum, 
Japanese water stones, Arkansas stones, various jigs, things that I've designed for myself. I could go on and on, but I prefer this one. So yeah, if you have a grinder that this system will work on, and that's not a trivial caveat, I'd recommend the Ameribraid sharpening system unreservedly. All right, guys, thanks for watching and see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.